okay let's look at the design of column splice today first let's discuss about what is a splice a splice means it is a joint which is provided along the length of a member and when should we provide splices generally what happens is that when the length of a column is more than the length of the column section available in market then in that case you have to join a number of pieces to furnish the full length of the column in our structure in that case you may have to or you have to design for column splice and in another case in case of multi-story buildings what may happen is that because the columns in the lower stories are carrying greater axial load those columns in the lower story may have a higher cross-sectional area or higher section as compared to the columns in the upper story in that case also you may have to or you have to design for splice to continue or to ensure the continuity of our member for example if you see on your screen here here we have a column section on this left hand side diagram if you see that these two i sections are being joined and at the joint we have designed for column splice using certain thickness of plates here and this is the front view and these plates are being joined to these both of these i beams using bolts here and also in the diagram below you can see that the cross sectional area of the lower column is greater than that of the upper column in that case also to join these two columns splice has been designed and you can see some packing materials these packing plates that have been kept between this column and the splice plate and then the splice is designed to join with these columns using different bolts here <coughs> So that is when we need column splices or only splices. So what happens is that if any compression member is loaded concentrically, then theoretically there is no need for any splice. In that case, the compressive forces will be transmitted by direct bearing since the column sections will be resting on top of each other and they can function satisfactorily in that case. However, rarely it is the case that in our real structures, the load is truly axial, such that there is some eccentricity in the application of axial load and that eccentricity means now the real column has to resist bending due to that eccentrically applied load. So the bending moment may arise in such columns, one due to the applied bending moments due to the loads coming onto the column and another is due to the eccentricity of the applied loads and also in our real structures and in real life two columns can never be machined so perfectly together that means there will be some undulations in the cutting of those columns or in the joints of those columns so that the full load coming onto the upper column cannot be transmitted to the lower column only through the property of bearing so in that cases also the splice has to be designed in our daily life or during the construction of real structures. So we will look at the design of that column splice today. And this will be a short Excel sheet. There aren't many steps here. First, we have the column six, the built up column of ISMC 300. These are the column properties. I'm not going through them again. And these are the loads that is coming onto our column. To find these loads, you can just go to your ETAPS model after analysis in the same section display table there under analysis results you can go for frame forces and under frame forces you can go for beam forces you can select any column here for which you want to design the splice and then you can extract the value of this loads and moments so our axial load coming onto our column is 313 kilonewton the shear force is 18.25 kilonewton and the moment is 23.1972 kilonewton meter so let us assume that the column has machine dense so if the column has machine dense the splice plate and the connection should be designed to carry 50 percent of the axial load and tension if any due to bending moment also see here we have to calculate two different types of loads one is PU1 and PU2. PU1 is the load 
that the splice plate and the connections have to withstand that is coming onto these columns and pu2 is the load from the momenta from the moment so first we will calculate pu1 and this value of pu1 the load pu1 for the design of splice and connection this is due to the axial factor load that means this pu so the value of pu1 will be pu by 4 for machine dense and pu by 2 for non machine dense since we have considered machine dense the value of pu1 will be pu by 4 that means 313 by 4 will be 78.43 kN now for now let us assume that the thickness of plate is 6 of 6 mm here we have assumed this thickness and then pu2 is given by a moment over lever arm this lever arm is the center to center distance of the two splice plates whereas pu2 is the design load due to the ultimate moment this pu2 is the design load due to ultimate moment its value is given by moment over lever arm lever arm is the center to center distance of the two splice plates so this moment means this 23 kilonewton meter and the value of this lever arm is calculated in this way b11 plus b24 by 2 plus b25 by 2 that means b11 here is the depth of our section which is 300 mm let me draw one diagram here if you see the flange side of your built-up column then the depth of our flange side is 300 mm whereas if you see the wave side then there is a gap here and the total depth of our column is 225 mm so this 300 mm we will take for now because we are designing our let us consider that we are designing our splice plate for the website as shown in this diagram also this is just a sample diagram so our lever arm will be the depth of our section that is 300 mm plus half the thickness of plate on one side plus half the thickness of plate on the other side that means one is and the other is so it will be 300 plus 6 by 2 plus 6 by 2 that will be our lever arm so if you divide the moment by lever arm you get pu2 value to be 75.8 mm we have got pu1 and we have got pu2 now our total design load will be pu1 plus pu2 that means the total load for which the splice and connections are designed will be the sum of our design splice load and the load due to the bending moment that means splice load is pu1 plus design bending moment load is pu2 that comes out to be 154.23 kilonewton now using this load let us calculate the sectional area of our splice plate so let's see here splice plates are assumed to act as short columns with zero slenderness ratios that means in case of short columns we know that the plates will be subjected to yield stress the long columns will be subjected to buckling whereas the short columns will be subjected to yield stress so the cross-sectional area of the splice plate is calculated by dividing this total design load by our yield stress so our yield stress value is 250 megapascal that is your fit your 250 grade steel by dividing this 154 by 250 you get the sectional area to be 616.92 millimeter square now after finding the sectional area let us calculate the width of our splice plate so generally what happens is that the width of the splice plate is usually kept equal to the width of the column flange that means for example if we are joining this i beam with another i beam at the top then our width of our splice plate will be equal to the width of this flange here you also saw in our first diagram that let's look here this is the width of our splice plate and this is equal to the width of our flange here. but since it is our built up column here we will take the width of our splice plate equal to the width of our column that is 300 mm so width of our splice plate is 300 mm now if you divide this sectional area by 
the width of your splice, splice plate, you will get the thickness of your splice plate, which will be 2.056 mm. But generally, we should not take the thickness of splice plate less than 6 mm because of the weather conditions. Because these columns may be exposed to adverse weather conditions, we will not take the thickness of the splice plate less than 6 mm, although it is coming out to be 2.056 mm here, hence we take the thickness to be 6 mm. Now, since this thickness is greater than or equal to 6, this just thickness OK check here. Now we know the thickness of our splice plate here. Now we have to design for bolts. To design for bolts, let us first find the required strength of a bolt. First, let's find the shear strength of the bolt, which is given by the formula here. I have already discussed this various tension capacity, shear capacity, and strength of bolt in bearing in our previous lecture on design of end plate moment connection also. So I will go through this quickly here. The shear strength is given by this formula A and B. A and B area, this means the area of bolt which is given by 0.78 into pi by 4 into diameter square. For bolt we have considered here a diameter of 20 mm. So this will be 0.78 into pi by 4 into 20 square. F U V is the ultimate tensile strength of bolt which we have considered here is 400 megapascals and gamma M B is the partial safety factor which is 1.1. You will get the shear strength of bolt to be 45.27 kN. Similarly, strength of bolt in bearing is given by this formula here 2.5 kV dt F U by gamma M B. And this kV value is given by the minimum of these four values E by 3D naught, P by 3D naught minus 0.25, FU, B by FU, and 1. So let's first find E here. E means the edge distance. And the clause 10.2.4.2 of IS800 says that the minimum edge distance should not be less than 1.5 times the bolt diameter. So we have considered our bolt diameter is 20 mm, hence 1.5 into bolt diameter comes out to be 300 mm. Let's take its distance as 35 mm, a value little greater than this 30 mm. Similarly, for pitch, clause 10.2.2 says that the distance between the center of fasteners shall not be less than 2.5 times the nominal diameter. So our diameter is 20 mm, so our pitch will be 2.5 into 20 means 50 mm. Our pitch should not be less than 50 mm. For now, let us take the pitch as 70 mm and then find the value of kb. E by 3 d naught. d naught means the diameter of the hole, which is given by diameter of bolt plus 2 mm for 20 mm dia bolt. E by 3 d naught comes out to be 0.53. P by 3 d naught minus 0.25 comes out to be 0.81. FUB by FU comes out to be 0.98 and the value of 1. So among these four values, the minimum value is 0.53 and so we take the value of KV as 0.53. So we have the value of KV. D means 20 mm. T means the thickness of plate 6 mm and we already know FU and gamma YMB. So using this value, we got the bearing strength is 52.18 kN. Now we can see that the shear strength of one bolt is 45.27 kN and strength in bearing is 52.18 kN. So the bolt value, that means the design strength shall be taken as the lesser of these two values. That means we take it as 45.27 kN. So bolt value 45.27 kN. If you divide the load coming onto our splice, that means this total load on it 54.23 kN by the strength of one bolt you will find it to be number of bolts required is 3.41 now let us say that we will use six bolts here six bolt means six bolt on one side and six bolt on another side of this joint here so now we have the width of our splice plate which is equal to the width of our column 300 mm Number of bolts is six numbers on either side of this joint. Now, one final thing that we need here is this length of your splice plate or this depth of your splice plate. 
So how will you calculate the depth of your supply split? I have calculated here it to be 280 mm and in diagram it is nearly equal to 280 that means 300 mm we have used. So how will you calculate this length? Let's see here. The length is calculated based on the edge distance and pitch. For example, if this is our supply split and this is our joint here, this means this is the point where the two columns are joined. And there are, let me just show you one line of bolt here. So this length is given by, you can say that this is one edge distance. This is pitch. This is another edge distance. This is another edge distance. This is another pitch. This is another edge distance. So pitch means the distance between the two fasteners. We have two pitch here. One is distance between these two bolts and another is distance between these two bolts. And edge distance, we have four edge distance. One, the distance from the center of this pole to this edge. Second, the center of this pole to this edge. Third, the distance from this edge to this center of this pole. And fourth, the distance from center of this pole to this edge. So we have here four edge distance and then two pitch. Hence, the total length or depth of this splice plate is calculated as 4E plus 2P. I have done the same thing here. 4 into B51 means 4 into E plus 2 into B55 means 2 into P. That means 2 into 70 plus 4 into 35. You get the length to be 280 mm. So finally, the design of our splice plate is complete. Length will be 280 mm. The depth will be 300 mm and then the thickness of that plate will be 6 mm. The number of bolts to be used is 6 mm on either side of this joint. So this is how you design a splice plate for your steel columns. This will be the end of our this lecture video. We'll meet again soon in another video. Thank you.